Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, I have a bit of a confession to make. So I haven't done a board repair video in a while, and what I've found um, is that I don't actually enjoy them anymore. There's, I, I don't know how else to put it, but I used to kind of enjoy coming on here and uh, opening up the machine and going through the board in front of you all and troubleshooting it and figuring it out and working together. And now that is not something that I, get, I really uh, find fun. I, maybe it's because I've been doing the exact same type of video for about seven years. Perhaps it's the fact that it's, you know, seven years through. But for whatever reason, I just don't find logging on here to do this to be fun with you. So as a result, you've seen me do uh, less of these. But let's, let's get one going today. So this machine... The customer says, will not charge the battery. They say it will turn on, but it will not charge the battery. So let's get an idea of what's going on here. So when I plug this computer in, first thing we do, let's see. So it's taking 20 volts. So the machine is able to activate the charger. Good stuff. It's taking 700 milliamps, though. That's not charging amperage. That's just enough to turn it on. Now, let's see if this thing actually does turn on. That is uh, important. I just heard it make a beep at me. Okay, it does turn on. Now, next up, does it see a battery? Does it acknowledge that there is a battery? I think a big part of it is also that I spent the last few months kind of restructuring my business to prepare for having, um, you know, for having like over 10 or 20 employees, and that has just kind of sucked a lot of the fun out of streaming for me. So as you can see, it does see the battery. It sees it, but it says 0%. And obviously it's not charging because it's not taking enough amperage. So that is, this is a problem. Now, what I want to do here is see if I unplug the battery from the system altogether, I want to see if PP Bus G3 Hot, the main power rail that goes to the battery is present. So this page over here is for charging the battery. It says PBUS Apply and Battery Charger. This is where PP Bus G3 Hot is created. This is where it's going to take the 20 volts from the charger and turn it into 12 or 13 volts for the system. Now, this is a transistor that sits between PP Bus G3 Hot and the battery. So the first thing I want to do here is see if it's being told to open. Now, this here is a P-channel MOSFET. A P-channel MOSFET means it's going to allow power to go through when the power on the gate is lower than the power on the source. So let's take a look at what's going on there. So I'm going to take a look at Q7065. Put that on the screen right here. It knows, Mario. It, it knows. I, it, it, definitely t it definitely knows. Okay, so let's look, look at that on the screen. Now, the source is going to be either pins 3, 2, and 1, and the gate is going to be pin 4. So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to get the multimeter on the screen. I don't need the power supply software right now because we're not using it. So I'm going to exit out of that. See a little red dot on the screen there because uh, I don't know. Okay, so... Ooh, all right. Okay, we're getting 13 volts on the gate, 13 volts on the source. Well, there you go. But you have 12 volts on the... What? You son of a... I, you, I unplugged the battery. That doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Okay, let's look up if I'm correct about this. SI7137DP. Is this actually a P-channel? This is indeed a P-channel. All right, so the board physically appears to be kind of spotless. Uh, nothing on here that explains why it would not be charging a battery. Okay, we do have some sign of idiot damage here. Let's see, can you guys see the idiot damage? Looks like someone chewed on this. Okay, so what this tells me is that I cannot trust that when they said I had a computer repair shop replace the battery, that they actually replaced the battery. Most likely they, they koala it. I don't know if any of you have seen this, but this has kind of been, I feel bad doing this, but this is kind of 
Thoughts on the new MacBook Air design without fans? I, I did a video on this three years ago, two years ago. It doesn't have a fan. Like, what do you... Oh, wait, no, that was the A 1534 Well, first they got rid of the heat pipe. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, you had a MacBook that had a heat sink that wasn't attached to the fan. So the next natural thing to do is to get rid of the fan, you know? So... Where was it? Okay, so this is what I think probably happened. And I'm trying to be as unbiased as I can here. You know, I realize having a computer repair shop myself makes me a bit biased when discussing what other people are... Uh, Poor koala. Poor little koala. And then he gets sad and he's like, oh no, I can't. But so we have a saying here where when some, so that's pretty much, they koala it. They clearly koala this. So I have no level of trust that they have any idea what the fuck they're doing. I'm going to see if my battery works with it. A 1819 battery goes into this computer. I think the koala is an adorable, cute little animal, but God, is it dumb. To be clear, I don't know if they screwed up the battery swap. It's just that trackpad thing gives me a hint that I should not trust anything in the notes about what the first place did. It's just an indicator is all, just an indicator. Remember, this job is all detective work. What we do here is detective work. Kind of fun doing detective work, you know? So, let's grab the battery screw, plug this in, and I want to see if it takes more than an amp. Remember, six to 700 milliamps is what the machine will take by itself without the battery. Okay. One point two amps, one point four amps, one point five amps, one point six amps, one point five amps, one point five, one point six. Now before this machine was only taking eight hundred to nine hundred milliamps max on the charge port. And as you can see, when I plug in a different battery, now it's taking two point five, two point six, and continuing to go upwards. So the only problem with this computer is a bad charge port. Now, the way that we figured that out is we noticed that there was, it, there was really no sane reason for the board to not be functioning. I noticed that there was no sane reason for the board to not function. Yeah, let's show you here. Because there's no liquid damage on it whatsoever. Nothing is burned. Now, when the old battery was plugged in, the gate on this MOSFET was, l was the same as the source, so it wasn't passing anything through to the battery. However, when I plug in my battery, as you can see here, the gate is now... Oh, Paul Daniels is freaking software. One second. All right, let's do that again. Redo that segment. <coughs> Edit. So as you can see here, the gate of that MOSFET is now 4 volts. The source is 12.4 which means that it is actually going to be allowing uh, more current to go through. So, you take a look over here in the schematic and the board view. This is going to be what sits right over here. This is going to be what sits between the charging voltage, PP bus G3 hot, and the battery. And this is a P-channel MOSFET. As I explain in my sheet, which is, should be in the description of all my board repair videos, for a P-channel MOSFET to allow power to go through, the gate, G, pin 4, needs to be lower than the source. Now, with the existing battery, it was stuck 
at 13 volts. That means that this chip, the ISL9239, which is going to be able to communicate with the battery, was not turning on. Perhaps it spoke to the battery, and the battery said, I don't know. Yo mom is so ugly that she writes ISL 6259 in her schematic, even when it uses an ISL 9239. And then the ISL 9239 said, well, fuck you. I ain't charging you. And it didn't charge it. So then I plug in a different battery. And when I plug in a different battery, not, I can tell that it's charging for two reasons. First reason is that it's taking more than an amp. So the way I can figure out what the battery is taking is quite simple. So I unplug the battery right here, and then you see how many amps the machine takes by itself. Like how much does this specific motherboard need in order to turn on? And now I see how many amps it needs to turn on. So let's say 200 to 600 milliamps, or in this case, in the booting, pro it's, it's, it's idling, so it's sitting at 200 milliamps. When you plug the battery in, Everything that's over that, we can assume, is the battery drawing power. And as you can see, it's going back up again. It's going to be going back up to an amp, or more than an amp, and so on and so forth. Now, the next way I could tell that it was charging with the good battery, in addition to that, was that when I measure on the gate, it's no longer 13 volts. It's 4. Now, what controls the gate voltage of this transistor that's going to say whether or not PPBUS G3Hot gets to go to the battery? The ISO9239, the charging chip. It's going to control that on its B gate, battery gate line. It's going to send out 4 volts if it's allowed to charge the battery, or 13 volts if it's not. So what happened here is it spoke to the battery, which is going to happen on this little data line right over here. So when you plug in the battery, there is a data line. There we go. And this connector, J6951. And that is going to go over to here. Pin 35. See this? SDA, SCL, right over here. That's going to talk to the battery, right on this line. And it spoke to this battery, and rather than saying, yo mama so fat, that something else, it said, why hello, I would be honored to power you, little MacBook. And it worked. Now, what led me to believe that there, I should check and see if this battery had actually been replaced before moving forward? Why would I do that when the note said we have already tried replacing the battery at a computer repair place? And that's an excellent question. What happened is I looked around the board and I saw signs of, uh, of uh, what I like to call koala syndrome. Here, that, that's one of the terms that we have here at, uh, at Rossman Repair. So uh, I'll put the video over here again just so you can get an idea. Uh, the koala is a very cute animal, but unfortunately the koala, as Frank explains, he is, who is one of the best people to listen to if you want to learn about science, animals, culture, you know, all this type of stuff, is that the koala has a smooth brain. So if you put a koala in a room and you paint a tree on the, on the wall, it will actually try to climb the wall thinking it's a real tree because it's, it's a smooth brain. And you could see that there were some signs, uh, unfortunately, that this customer had been to a smooth brain place because uh, when I look at this, and you know, I, I feel bad for the customer, I really do. They could have had this fixed locally and they didn't, but it is what it is. Because you can see that there is this chewing away at the trackpad connector, which means that they were not able to figure out how to remove that flex that was plugged into the board without damaging the board, which is really, really bad. I've hired people that are incapable. I've hired morons before that barely made it past one or two days of training. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've, I've been through some really good and I've been through some really bad and I don't know how you would actually do this. I mean, honestly, functionally speaking, I don't know how you would damage this because what you do is you put your fingernail in, just to give you an idea, when this is in the machine, the connector cable comes over it this way. It's right. So you're not going to come in from this way to pry it off. You're going to come in from this way. So for your fingernail to not scratch this, but scratch that, would require an amazing level of, um, I, I don't know, honestly, perhaps koala is the wrong word, because I think it would require a high level of intellect to manage to break this section without breaking that section. I don't know how the hell they did it, but they did it. And the fact that that occurred gave me a hint that, 
this uh, that I should not trust anything that was in the initial notes as to what was done with the machine. And one of the things that people may, may not understand, so we get these notes all the time. We get like, you know, people will send us this stuff in the mail. They'll, they'll send us like two or three or five pages of all the troubleshooting stuff that was done. And what, what peop, I, this, this may come off as rude, and I truly don't mean it as such, but most of the techs here won't even read the page. They'll literally just throw it in the garbage and then do their own estimate because this is incredibly incredibly commonplace like i did this i did that it can't be this because i did this already and it this is you know if, if you have a shop of a similar type you may ask the customer for the history and all that and we and we do when we see them in person but when we're not able to have that immediate conversation because we're just taking it out of a box or putting it on our desk i will read the paper but very often i read the paper and the paper actually tricks me to some extent because this would lead me to believe perhaps there's something wrong with my transistor, maybe my ISL9239 is faulty, I would replace it, and I would waste a lot of time that didn't need to be wasted because I got Koalit. So, always make sure that you're not getting Koalit. And that, that's about it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I will see you all in the next video. Uh, bye now.